and the woman, the husband, and the wife. As we read from verse 22, it says, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. Verse 23, for the husband is the head of the wife. The husband is the head of the wife. Let, let's stop there for a moment. For those of us who are planning to get married, who are praying to get married, the head determines the direction of the body. Our head naturally determines how far our bodies will go. Our head determines how far the hand can walk. Our heads determine how far the feet will travel. Our head determines how far the whole body will move. That's why you want to think through. And you want to plan very well. And you want to pray very well. Because once you have this man as your head, you are joined together as the head is joined with the body. And no matter how clever you are, no matter how serious you are, no matter how spiritual you appear to be now without that man, once you come together, you'll not go farther than that head can carry you. That, that's the plan of God. That's one thing. It's the head and the body united together too. It's only death that separates the head and the body. Once you have, look at the man. If you cut off that head, the body is dead and the head is dead. That means then in the union, in marriage, in the mind of God is the head and the body. And to do anything and to sever them, to separate them, to cut off the head, is to kill the marriage. And to kill both of them. Because in the mind of God, the union is the union of the head and the body. Not only that, the head is the one that plans and thinks and foresees and will project for the body. What can the hand write without the head? And what can the hand produce without the head? What can the hand manufacture without the head? You are literally paralyzed. You are impotent. You are weak. You are anemic. You have nothing you can do without a good head. That means then, as you are planning, I want to get married. I want to get good. God wants you to get married. In fact, he is planning for you. I said he's planning for you. Why don't you ask him? Because when you find a wife, when you find a husband, that wife is from the Lord. And I believe that this morning, before you even pray, he has it for you already. And all you need is the revelation. You know, you've been looking here and looking there. Revelation will come to you in Jesus' name. We're looking at, we're looking at Proverbs chapter 18. And I'm reading from verse 22. Uh, Proverbs chapter 18, verse 22. Whoso findeth a wife, findeth, findeth. No, not something we we'll regret about. Had I known, if you find a wife from the Lord, you'll find a good, good thing. Give me a good amen there. And obtain a favor of the Lord. It's the Lord's doing. It says, you obtain a favor of the Lord. But the question is, how can I receive that favor of the Lord? Uh, there are times that people make things very much complicated. And uh, it's like what God makes simple. The people, they complicated it. Look at, um, look at Adam. Adam did not have any lecture, any message. Adam did not have any kind of encouragement. Adam did not have any kind of counseling or demonstration of this. Adam did not have a previous example. How will I know? You will know. How will I be able to tell? You will tell. God created Eve.
Because when God was going to make Eve, Adam was actually sleeping. And it wasn't ordinary, you know, sleep from 10 p.m. to uh, 4 a.m. or 5 a.m. This was deep sleep that God performed an operation and removed a rib and made a woman. And Adam did not know anything going on. As he woke up like this, God said, I've been thinking about you. As we wake up tomorrow morning, I've been thinking about you. God is thinking about you in Jesus' name. And then he said, look at what I have for you. And immediately Adam recognized, that's my bone. That's my flesh. You will recognize. When God guides, it's very simple. He will tell you in your heart. But you must believe the voice of God that is coming to your heart. You must believe the recognition. But if you, if you know it in your heart, am I making a mistake? Ah, am I sure? What if and what if? Then you destroy the plan God has for you. You will not destroy that plan. I'm looking at uh, Psalm 25. I'm reading from verse 9. Psalm 25 verse 9. The meek will he guide in judgment. That's what judgment means, in decision. As you're making decision, the Lord will guide you. The meek will he teach his way. He will tell you. He will make you to know. After all, he has uh, that uh, sister for you, or he has that brother for you. If he has been preparing the person for you and brings the person to you, he will help you to recognize. You will recognize. All the dimness of sight and all the doubts in our hearts this morning, they are wiped away in Jesus' name. We're looking at Psalm 32, verse 8. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. You missed an amen there. I will guide thee with mine eyes. He is a father. Hasn't your earthly father asked you, my daughter, when are you getting married? If your earthly father is concerned, our heavenly father is more concerned. Hasn't your mother asked you, my brother, how about, uh, you know, the, uh, you know, don't you marry your church? When are you going to get married? I want you to get married so that I can carry your children. If mommy has said that, don't you think that God loves you more than mommy? And what mommy is asking for is the will of God. And God is more interested than you are. It's just that you have not been paying attention. You will pay attention. And the Lord himself, he will fulfill his will in your life in Jesus' name. Because it's a permanent partnership, a permanent relationship. That's why we don't just jump into it. He leads us and he's saying, this is the one I'm choosing for you. It will be for life. It will be for life in Jesus' name. Not something to tolerate, not something to endure, something to enjoy. Ah, I've lost my congregation. It will come in Jesus' name. And look at uh, Jeremiah chapter 29. Jeremiah chapter 29, and I'm reading from verse 11. It's talking about you. I said it's talking about you. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. To give you an expected end. I pray that everything that has seen that that expectation will be canceled this morning. Yeah. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me. Tell me the rest of that verse 12. I will hack in unto you. I will hack in unto you. I will hack in unto you. He will listen to you in Jesus' name. This year, 2015, yeah. was the best year you ever lived in your life in Jesus' name. Whatever you missed in the past years, everything is coming this year. All barriers are taken away. All doors are open. You will pray and God will hack in unto you. And you shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with all your heart you search for him with all your heart he will answer you and then he will give you the request that you are asking of 
him. Uh, just a word of caution. In uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. I want you to understand there are times that we may have need in our body. And the need may appear so pressing. But it's the devil that is painting the picture of pressure. Uh, the devil is saying, if you don't uh, have that now, when else will you have that? And the Lord is coming. Is coming with what belongs to you. And just before he gets there, and the devil knows, he knows that the Lord is bringing, you have been praying for how many years now? And this is the year of the answer. And you have been talking to the Lord, asking the Lord, and the Lord is saying, I remember you. I will do it. I said you will do it. And then somebody then turns to be like an Esau. It's coming from the field. And he's saying, I am fainting. And what am I going to do? And Jacob said, all right, I'll give you food. Only on one condition. Sell your birthright. You have a birthright. You have a privilege. And you have that which God has appointed for you. But Satan painted the picture as if, if you don't eat now, now, you will die. And so he said, okay, what's birthright? What am I going to do with birthright? And he sold the birthright, and then he ate, and he went his way. There are people that are thinking it will never happen. When? It will happen this year. And so because they have lost hope. Their prayer has been answered already because when Daniel prayed, it appeared there was no answer. But God had sent the answer. And the angel came 21 days after. 21 days, that's only three weeks. My sister, you've been waiting for two, three years. You can wait for three weeks. I said you can wait for three weeks. And then, brother, you've been waiting and praying and praying all these many years. Just 21 days, you will wait. You send your cards to me. I said you will send your cards to me. So the angel said, I was already coming. But Satan, with the spirits, the prince of Persia, stopped him. All those princes of Persia hindering the answer to come at the right time. That's why we're here. We'll break every yoke. We'll destroy the works of the devil. He has given us the authority. He said, whatsoever we bind on earth, tell me, it's bound in heaven. And you are part of this church. Your problem is our problem. Your concern is our concern. It will happen. But don't stretch your hands in the wrong place and take the wrong thing before it comes because it's coming very soon. Here is the caution now, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, reading from verse 14. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Don't go that direction. Don't go the direction of Esau. Don't say, I'm fed up. Whatever comes now, I will take. You are better than that. You are more precious than that. It's going to give you the expected end. For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? Or what communion has light with darkness? And what concord has Christ with Belial? Or what part has he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them. I will walk in them. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Verse 17, wherefore, come out from among them. Don't strike any deal with an unbeliever. Don't make any promise to that unbeliever. Don't sell yourself into the hands of that unbeliever. And don't say, well, whatever, marriage is marriage. Uh-uh. We're talking about godly marriage. You will have a godly marriage. There are godless marriages where those people, they fight like a rat and cat every night. Your marriage will not be like that. You know, the man is drunk and the woman has to be, you know, gathering all the vomit and everything. You will not be like that. 
The man is in occultism, and there is a child of Satan. You will not be daughter-in-law to Satan. You will not be son-in-law to Satan. Leave them alone. Let them do their own worldly marriage. Yours is going to be a godly marriage. Wherefore, come out from among them. And be ye separate, says the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. I will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons, and my daughter, says the Lord Almighty. And let's come back to Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5, and I'm reading from verse 23, and I'm reading from verse 28. Verse 23, it says... For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Verse 28, so ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. You see the intimacy. You see the union. You see how they are connected together. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. Loveth himself. And already the New Testament tells us the reason why we get married. One of the reasons in um, 1 Corinthians chapter 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, we're reading from verse 2. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let how many people? Every man tell me out loud. Ah, say it as if you know you are part of this. Let every man have his own wife. And let every woman have her own husband. That means, think about this. For God to create a woman, a masterpiece, and put a lot into that woman, emotionally, spiritually, morally, physically and he says i have made this just for you and for you alone the man having his own wife is glorious i said it's glorious that's exactly what god did for adam and he said eve is yours and yours alone and the woman that is yours and yours alone you'll make the discovery this year. The one, the, the man that is yours and yours alone without anybody sharing with you, you will make the discovery this year in Jesus' name. Look at verse 39. In verse 39, the wife is bound by the law as long as her husband liveth. But if her husband be dead, she is at liberty to be married. This is what I want you to look at. To be married to whom she will. To be married to whom she will. Only in the Lord. What does that mean? Paul said, when you are a believer and you are prayed and God has revealed the woman to you. He says, you are free to marry in the Lord. Not an unbeliever, not a sinner. You are free to marry whom the Lord has revealed to you, not whom Paul, the apostle, has revealed to you, whom he will. And the same thing for the woman, whom she will, is not the church. That